After the Basel massacre occurred, it's really important to understand that there was actually a time of peace until the year about 1773. So a couple years after the shootings in Boston, there was some peace in the colonies in regards to protests and anti-sentiment against British rule. But in 1773, once again, another act was put into place. This was called the Tea Act, and this prompted more protests and more anti-British settlement. The American protest of the British tea had hurt the British East India Company so badly. Okay, this company was in danger of going broke unless it could sell 17 million pounds of tea that were sitting in the warehouses. Okay, the British East India Company was the largest kind of trade company on earth at this time. Okay, it was very popular, it traveled the world, and we know that England was the, was the, uh, the richest and the most um, wealthy country in the world, and this was a big part of their wealth and they needed this in order to kind of sustain that uh, title as the biggest empire in the world. So what the Tea Act did is it actually lowered the cost of tea. Even with the tax attached it made it cheaper than Dutch smuggled tea because the colonists were smuggling in Dutch tea because of the tax on the tea and they didn't want to help or uh, provide funds to the British government. So since this tea was so cheap, even with the tax attached, it gave the British East India Company a monopoly, which means that they had complete control over tea sales in the colonies. There wasn't any company that could compete against them. The British thought now the colonists would buy the tea because it was so cheap. Little did they know they were completely wrong. The colonists saw this tea act as another attempt to tax them without their consent. Even if it was cheaper than all the other teas, they knew that the British government was still trying to tax them without representation. People also saw Britain's ability to, to easily make a monopoly, and many saw this as a threat. Making monopoly is um, not good. There's actually today many laws that will prevent companies and businesses from pretty much dominating the market. And colonists saw this as a threat. They're like, okay, if Britain can make this large monopoly in just a little bit of time, they have complete control of our economy, and that is very dangerous. And that is the kind of thinking that the colonists had. So these uh, ships from the East India Company were arriving in the colonies to help distribute this tea that had the very, very cheap prices on them, even with the tax attached. But when these ships arrived, there were many protesters awaiting them at the harbors, and they actually kept them from unloading their supplies. This was such a big protest that some ships even turned around back to Britain. The royal governor mandated the British Navy to block the exit to the harbor. Okay, so this meant that uh, there was a royal governor in, let's say, the, the Boston Harbor, and he was mad that the, ch the ships were turning around, and he wanted them to stay in the harbor. So he had the British Navy that was stationed in the colonies to block that harbor so the British uh, ships could not leave with that tea. He insisted that three ships must stay until all the tea was unloaded. And this was in hopes to help the British government and force the colonists to buy this tea so Britain could get this tax. Now, the Sons of Liberty, which is a group that we will start to, to see become very prevalent, had an idea. Before we get to this idea, I wanted to kind of show you what maybe some of the ships would look like that are bringing in this tea. Okay, here's a picture of a ship um, that would carry this tea. Mostly it would be on the bottom of the ship here. But three ships just like this were forced to stay in the British Harbor, and they were forced to unload all this tea. So the Sons of Liberty had this idea. That night, 50 men from the Sons of Liberty, dressed as Mohawk Indians, and boarded the three tea ships that were forced to stay. 
in the Boston Harbor. They opened all of the hatches and took out all the chests of tea. They broke open the chest and poured all the tea into the water. In all, about 90,000 pounds of tea was dumped into the water that night. No one, nothing else was touched on the boat. This was just a, uh, an idea to get rid of the tea that the British were trying to bring in and force the colonists to buy. And that was all poured into the harbor. Obviously, this was called the Boston Tea Party. And you have probably heard of the Boston Tea Party before, maybe even uh, been to uh, a little historical site in Boston. Do they still have a little historical site for the Boston Tea Party? Maybe you've seen some pictures. I'll sh show you some here. So this is obviously an illustration, a replication of what was going on. Now the Boston Tea Party wasn't during the day. It was at night. So these 50 men from the Sons of Liberty, which is a, a patriot group, um, came in at night and pretty much poured all of these chests that you're seeing right here into the water so there was no more tea left on the ships. Okay, they also dressed as Mohawk Indians and that was in order to disguise themselves. Here is kind of another replication of this night. Obviously these men weren't actually Mohawk Indians but they were dressed in disguise so they would break open these chests as you can see here and then they would pour those, that tea into the harbor. You can imagine that leaders in Britain were very upset about this act, especially since it was probably going to help the colonists because tea was very, very cheap. Um, so they knew that they needed kind of complete control of the colonies. The colonies were getting out of hand and they needed to kind of tighten their grasp on their control. So they passed a new series of laws. Once again, another response to the colonists' actions or protests. So these new laws were passed in 1774. These were so harsh that the colonists called them intolerable, which also means unacceptable. And they became known as the Intolerable Acts. The Intolerable Acts were actually designed to punish Massachusetts for the Boston Tea Party. So it was strictly designed to punish Massachusetts and um, for, for doing the Boston Tea Party and getting rid of that 90,000 pounds of tea. They closed the Boston Harbor until all the tea was paid off that was dumped into the harbor that night. They also placed Massachusetts firmly under British control. They could not even hold a town hall meeting, which we'll see is going to be very important to um, the colonies during this time. So they were pretty much dictating everything that Massachusetts and especially Boston could do. Um, British soldiers, there was another law that said that British soldiers that were accused of murder would be tried in England, not the colonies. So this was um, almost a threat because uh, obviously with the Boston uh, massacre, there had been murder in the colonies because of British soldiers, and now they were saying that they could be tried in England, which means that they probably had a greater chance of getting off uh, the murder case and becoming free, which the colonists did not like the idea of that. And then more troops were sent to Boston to enforce these laws, so more and more troops were coming to the colonies colonies were trying to dictate more exactly each step that the colonists could make and this just this pressure started building up especially between the patriots and the British government. 